I'm angry, angry at the state of the fitness industry. There's an incredible amount of misinformation out there because the fitness industry doesn't care about spreading facts anymore. They instead focus on these small details like carbs are the enemy or magical fat loss pills and they market them as the one incredible trick. And most of them are on steroids and they lie about it because the ones who is the biggest, the baddest, the strongest gets the most amount of social media attention. But the principles of fat loss and muscle gain is really not that complicated, which is why we're going back to the fundamentals with James Smith's new book, Not A Diet Book. I'm not trying to sell you anything this video and I have no ulterior motive but to give you the truth. All right, let's begin. There is a fundamental truth in the fitness industry that seems to be forgotten by everyone and it's calories in versus calories out. Just to keep your body functioning optimally, you already burn a significant amount of calories. If you're like me, for instance, 25 years old, six foot tall and 170 pounds, my body already burns 1810 calories just to keep the system running. But in my case, I cycle to work. I also work out a decent amount. Uh, which is why I burn an average of 2610 calories each day. Now here's the fundamental truth that should be on the forefront of every weight gain or weight loss conversation. If I eat more than 2610 calories each day, I gain weight. If I eat less than 2610 calories on average each day, I lose weight. It is that simple, calories in versus calories out. Even if I eat 2000 calories of just ice cream in a day, I still lose weight because I'm in a caloric deficit. It's just a law of nature. So if you want to lose weight, eat fewer calories than you burn. If you want to gain weight, however, eat more calories than you burn. This is something that seems to be totally forgotten and it should be the first thing you think about when you're trying to lose weight or gain muscle. Now calories can come in the form of three different macros fats, carbohydrates, and protein. It's important to note that none of these are inherently bad, even though some influencers like to say so. There is a difference in the density of these macros though. Every gram of protein or carbohydrates is four calories, while for every gram of fat, it's nine calories. So let's keep working with my calorie count, 2610 if I wanna maintain my weight. Ideally, you wanna get 20 to 30% from fat. Less than 20% can be detrimental to the production of essential hormones, uh, which we need to look, feel and perform at our best. The amount of protein required in someone's diet is largely determined by overall energy intake, body weight and composition, physical activity level and carbohydrate intake. James Smith recommends 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight, which in my case would be 120 grams of protein each day. But for someone who does a decent amount of weight training, I like to bump it up to one gram per pound of body weight, uh, just because it's better for muscle recovery and muscle gain. Then lastly, carbs and carbohydrates have been under attack in recent years by these fitness influencers. They make it seem like carbs are the enemy, which couldn't be further from the truth. Carbs are the best fuel your body uses to perform. It is also much more likely that excess fat consumption will add fat to your body than excess carbs. And it's simply because it's not efficient for your body to turn carbs into fat. Why do you think that all of these professional athletes eat so much rice and pasta? It's one, to perform at their best and two, to build muscle instead of fat. And I do know that a lot of fitness influencers say otherwise nowadays, but they're trying to sell you a diet or a workout routine, trust me. Don't just listen to me, but also do your own research and listen to actual professional athletes. They will tell you the same. I could go on and on about these low carb diets, but that's for another video. So you've got your fat intake, your protein intake, simply fill up the carb intake until you hit your calorie goal. And you can track these calories and your macros in a calorie tracker like MyFitnessPal. Uh, again, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but that's the one I use, but there are plenty more out there. And it seems like a lot of work, but really it's just five minutes a day and it helps massively. Like James Smith says, what gets measured gets improved. Now, how should you use this to either build muscle or lose fat? The most efficient way of losing fat or gaining muscle is to focus on one 
at the time. The reason why it's inefficient is because for muscle gain you have to be in a caloric surplus and for fat loss you have to be in a caloric deficit. And it's really hard to do that at the same time. If you're trying to lose fat, all you need to do is stay in that caloric deficit. The bigger the deficit, the quicker your body will eat your own fat. But don't overdo it though, because sometimes people make the deficit too big and the body cannot handle the stress and so they cannot maintain the deficit. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually have to do cardio either. But cardio is never a bad idea for your health and it will make it so that you burn extra calories which means you can eat more and stay in the same deficit, which is nice. And if you're trying to lose fat while maintaining your muscle, you should keep doing the weight training and also keep that protein intake high. Now for muscle gain, you should be in a caloric surplus. Ideally, it's about 15% more than your maintenance calories. Now, of course, you need to do some weight training as well. Otherwise, all of that weight gain will be fat. Try to do it at least three times a week with moderate to high intensity. And something that I believe in and James Smith also believes in is progressive overload. Now, what is progressive overload? Well, it's pretty simple. Simply track your workouts, your, your sets and your reps. Bring a notebook or bring a phone. There's apps for it. And just make sure that you do extra volume every week. Uh, increase one rep every week for each body part. And if you hit the top level of your rep range, you just switch to a higher weight. This will ensure that you're always getting stronger and with that you will gain muscle. So the real fundamentals of fitness is pretty easy. So one, stick to your calories and macros. Two, for fat loss, stay in a caloric deficit and do some optional cardio. Three, for muscle gain, stay in a caloric surplus and stick to your workout routine with progressive overload. So these are the fundamentals and it's really not that complicated. If you do all of these straightforward things, you will start climbing towards your goal as long as you're consistent. Now don't let these fake fitness gurus talk you into buying their next product, diet or workout routine. They're over complicated things or sometimes just flat out lying. And I understand it because simple facts don't sell, but a low carb diet or a get ripped in 30 days workout routine does sell. If you do do your own research, please stick to professional athletes or nutritionists or listen to James Smith, read his book. We have covered the basics of James Smith's book, uh, not a diet book, but there's so much information in there, fantastic information uh, that I couldn't uh, get it all in one video. So if you're interested, there's a link down below. If you've learned something this video, please leave a like. It takes me weeks to make one video next to my full-time job, so I really appreciate it. And if you want more videos like these where we discuss solid information from trusted offers uh, every two weeks, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon.